Hi, my name is Trevor, and today I'm going to take you through or walk you through setting up Ruckus Dynamic pre shaped keys. Now, as a wireless LAN engineer, um, I hope everyone watching this video understands the importance of securing a wireless LAN. And traditionally, what I've seen in the industry is a lot of people are still using WPA2 pre shaped keys with a passphrase. And, you know, recently, <laughs> Appreciate keys have been hacked, and um, you know there's a lot of risk in using them. And in our industry, um, I've seen a number of schools, um, enterprise, business, home office users still using WPA2 appreciate keys. Problem with a appreciate key is if it gets compromised, um, you know whoever gets their hands on that key can basically decrypt all the information on that wireless LAN. So there is a risk to using them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to go in, configure, set this up on a SmartZone 100 controller. Great thing about dynamic pre-shared keys is the fact that, you know, you don't need an expensive external server. You don't need a lot of um, technical skills around deploying something like a radio server or Active Directory or LDAP. So you'll see um, I'm about to log into my uh, Smart Zone 100. In fact, it's a cluster of Smart Zone 104s. And, um, you know, it's secure. I'm using HTTPS. And of course, the port number is 8443. I'm going to log in. And I'm going to show you around. I'm going to show you exactly how to go about configuring a dynamic pre shared key WLAN. Let me get down to the right menu we are going to select wireless lands of course this is where we're going to build our wlan config i'm going to select my home lab as zone and i'm going to go and create the wlan so for a lot of you that work with ruckus controllers this is pretty straightforward right so i'm going to call it trevor dpsk and of course the name and the ssid will be the same they don't have to be, but in terms of troubleshooting and simplicity, I will keep them the same. The zone is home lab. Under authentication options, it looks exactly the same as if we're building a WPA2, um, you know, standard wireless LAN. So the um, authentication is going to be standard. The method will be open. Encryption, we're going to encrypt it using WPA2 AES. But the trick is, I'm just going to enter in a completely random, sorry about that, set of characters. And, you know, take note, characters that I'm entering here, I'm not going to write them down. I'm not going to copy them. I'm not going to paste them anywhere. I'm not going to share them. And more importantly, no one that uses this wireless LAN will ever use this pre shared key to join the network. And I'll show it to you briefly, and I'm just going to hide it. It's not important. The next step in terms of the config is select dynamic appreciate keys. And by default, it's disabled. We're going to go and select internal. Internal basically means that the dynamic appreciate keys will be generated and managed entirely by the smart zone controller. You will see there is another radio button with external. We can incorporate dynamic pre-shared keys into a radius solution. The only reason we ever do that is, you know, for scalability reasons. For the uh, purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to keep it internal. Now, I've selected internal, and all I have to do now is specify a key length in terms of how many characters we will use for this dynamic pre-shared key. I really like this. Um, you can use between eight and 62 um, characters. And I'm going to leave it as 62. You also then get to specify the uh, dynamic pre-shared key type. And you, know, you have options like secure, where we can use just about every mixture of every printable um, ASCII character. Very nice. Keyboard friendly, you know, if you're like me and you've got fat fingers, 
Um, you know, it's quite difficult on a lot of devices that have small keypads to enter in really long, complex keys. You might want to use keyboard friendly um, or numbers only. You know, if you really want to simplify things, you can use numbers only. Demonstration, I'm going to use 62 characters. I'm going to use all possible printable ASCII characters. There's another option, another setting, and it's the expiration. How long do you want the dynamic pre-shared key to be valid for? Now, if you think of a contractor maybe coming into an organization, you might say, well, he's with us for a month. Um, you might say kids at a school, well, you know, they're going to be there for the school year. So let's say one year and creation time is a little drop down. We get to select you know, when the time starts for that one year period. So is it from, you know, when the user device first, you know, uses the pre-shared key or is it from when I actually say, okay, and I save the config. I'm going to say from first time use. And the rest of the config is exactly as you know. In terms of the wireless LAN, you know, you've got your radius options, firewall profiles, your advanced options. Uh, but in terms of the dynamic pre-shared key, that is what we need in terms of the wireless LAN. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, people say, well, that's great. We've created the WLAN and hopefully that will be pushed down to my AP. Um, I should see it come up pretty shortly. Let's just give that a little while. I will come back um, to my WinFi shortly. Anyway, there is the SSID, and you'll see the encryption method is WPA2. So people say, well, that's cool. So the wireless LAN is there. Now, what do we use to join it? Remember I said in the beginning of this video that we will not expose the WPA2 pre-shared key that we configure when we create the WLAN. Now at this point, we actually need to go in to the clients menu, scroll down until you see the dynamic pre-shared key menu, select that, and now we need to go in and actually create a dynamic pre-shared key, very cool. It then says to you, well, hey guy, um, you know, please select the zone to show the generated dynamic pre-shared key. So in other words, we're selecting a zone, um, you know, that we're going to use now to go in and actually create these keys. I'm going to select my home lab and you'll see there's a number of options. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to just click and say, generate a dynamic pre-shared key. There's a drop down. It's going to ask you, well, which WLAN do you want to generate the key for? You know, in a school environment, you might have different um, DPSK WLANs in different areas. They might be on different VLANs, etc. But I'm going to say Trevor DPSK. I'm going to personalize this because it's a single DPSK that's going to be used by myself. And you know, the passphrase I can leave blank. In other words, the controller will generate the passphrase for me. Uh, we also have a user role option. So it's really, really cool. You might have um, some firewall profiles or user traffic profiles configured, um, you know, and you can actually tie those user roles with the profiles to the dynamic pre shared key. Very nice. We can also drop a user using this key into a specific VLAN. I'm going to use one. It's my default W, uh, my default um, VLAN untagged. And there's an option for group or no group DPSK. Group DPSK means that this dynamic pre-shared key can be shared across multiple devices. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to say generate. You'll see it now says one dynamic pre-shared key um, was six, um, successfully generated. Um, at this point, all we need to do is download that CSV, and I'm going to go and open it up directly in my Excel. There you have it. Let me just expand out some of these tabs. And of course, the most important tab that we are looking for is, of course, our newly generated dynamic pre shared key. What I like about this output is it tells me one thing about the dynamic pre-shared key type. 
this type of key that I've generated here is considered an unbound dynamic pre-shared key. It is not bound to any specific device MAC address. And anyone that gets the key that joins the WLAN using this key, you know, would then be bound to this dynamic pre-shared key. So there's a bit of terminology and a, and a major difference between a bound DPSK and unbound. At this point, the key is unbound. However, you know, in the config, I can go and download a CSV file first. I can populate these fields. In other words, I can go and automatically put in my own passphrases, my own usernames, and their MAC addresses, and then import that CSV into the controller, and it will use that information to generate the pre-shared keys. So that is considered a bound dynamic pre-shared key. In this case, it's unbound, and all I'm gonna do now is make sure that I copy that key. Now, to demonstrate how well this works, I am going to take a look and see, number one, that I can see Trevor DPSK. The WLAN is there, which is absolutely fantastic. And the next step, of course, would be to go and join that dynamic pre-shared key. Using that dynamic pre-shared key, I'm going to join the network. And there we go, Trevor DPSK. And um, hopefully it's going to come up now and ask me for the key. There we go, copy and paste. And that is that very complex 62 character key that was generated. I'm going to then say uh, next. As you can see, my laptop has successfully connected to the dynamic pre-shared key, it says, or to the WLAN using the dynamic pre-shared key. It is a secured connection. And I'm now going to go back to my controller, just close out that screen. And I'm going to show you there is the record for Trevor DPSK. Let me just refresh the screen and you'll see it is now bound and it is bound to my WLAN adapter um, MAC address. So in other words, I have joined, you know, this WLAN using the dynamic pre-shared key as my passphrase. And if we now go and have a look under clients, wireless clients, there we are, there's laptop Trevor Stevens, it's a Windows device, there's my IP, my Mac, a9 B5 on my WLAN adapter. And, um, you know, the great thing about this is, is, you know, if you run a packet capture and you have a look at, you know, how you join using a dynamic pre-shared key, it looks exactly the same as a traditional WPA2 pre-shared key. Um, you know, of course, the difference here is, is that every single device that joins this network, you know, joins using his own, um, you know, individual dynamic pre-shared key that is linked to his device MAC address. The beauty is, of course, if you think of a school, if someone goes and loses a device, it's quite simple. We delete the dynamic pre-shared key and that device cannot rejoin the network. So for lost devices, stolen devices, and think of a, a scenario, maybe an administrator if a school, at a school. If the network was running a traditional WPA2 pre-shared key and the key was compromised, that would mean the administrator would need to go into the wireless LAN controller and you know, configure the WLAN with a new pre-shared key. That would mean that every single device that was connected to the network would now need to get the new pre-shared key to join. Um, causes a huge um, you know, administrative um, nightmare. Using dynamic pre-shared keys, you know, all you need to do is get the key to the user and um, let him join the network using his individual key. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's very secure. There's no need for external servers. It's very, very simple to manage, very simple um, to implement and configure. And, um, you know, I hope this video adds a lot of value and, um, you know, starts out a thought process about using these going forward. Of course, they are a lot more secure 
than traditional WPA2 pre-shade keys. Thank you very much and um, have a super day. Thank you.